To address the crisis facing legal education, the American Bar Association has assembled a task force. On Wednesday, the task force hosted a day-long conference at Indiana University McKinney School of Law. But what impact can the ABA have, and what can this task force do? No particular entity is actually in charge, but whenever a story is written about the current uh, uh, developments, the American Bar Association is usually in the story. When Lauren Bellows came to talk to the task force at the beginning um, of last year. She said, you know, we are looking to the task force to make sweeping recommendations to change the way legal education is delivered. The regulation of law schools is really a mess right now. Uh, the, the ABA standards have deep structural flaws. But it's hard to know how, how you all can do anything but stay out of our way as we try to figure it out. However, there is consensus about the difficulty of their job. What the task force is charged with doing is something very difficult. We need to move quickly to articulate um, means of quickly promoting positive change. It's hard to figure out the right thing to do here. There is an institutionalized resistance to change in the legal yeah. profession. Yeah. And what we have to do here is to begin to identify the constraints that keep us from making change. My whole feeling about this conference is a little bit like it's a meeting of the executive officers of the Titanic. The well-known problems were outlined. Most lawyers in this country, as we all know, still practice in small firms and nobody in a small firm. And, and this has been true ever since I graduated from law school 27 years ago, which is no one ever said anyone had time to train anybody. Going to law school for three years, I do not want to get out with $100,000 of debt or 200 or whatever it is now and be making 20 or $25 an hour doing non-disclosure agreements that require very little legal analysis. But legal employers aren't hiring very much. That's the problem. If your starting job is going to pay $45,000 a year, which is, for example, a small firm, a public defender, a starting prosecutor, for that to be a smart economic decision, you should not pay much more than that for your total legal education. What law schools have to think about is how they restructure the way we train law students to in some way make people who graduate law school able to serve as those that don't have lawyers now. And schools are going to be financially strapped and university presidents are going to be having to yes. cope with this. Right. There's not going to be enough bodies to go around and there's going to be some very unseemly behavior. The credentials of the students um, will, be, uh, will, will be lower because there's going to be a domino effect. Based on LSAT scores, the best and the brightest are not going to law school. Anymore. The cost is the thing. If we don't lower the cost, we're, you know, we're, we're cruising for a worse bruising. We're going to see here in the next three or four months a crisis hit law schools that will be uh, many times the crisis in legal education that prompted the formation of this uh, task force in the first place. At some point before your task force reaches its conclusion, uh, there's going to be a lot of blood spilled. Some goals and solutions were presented. We should ask that the uh, LSAC take LSAT scores and just put them into three big buckets. Uh, pretty high, like north of 155, in the middle where, we, where they're at risk of passing the bar. There's evidence that they can pass the bar exam, and then another bucket where we just don't think they're going to pass the bar exam. What if you withdrew the third year, did away with it? Would it solve a lot of these other problems or wouldn't it? I uh, would strongly favor uh, a two-year option in law school. So we need legal education, more law schools that cost $45,000 a year to get your degree. Um, and I would total. If I were a law school, I'd be making friends with the people that were hiring. And this is a firm that's hiring. It's actually owned by non-lawyers. Uh, their, their, their clients are Fortune 500 uh, uh, companies, and uh, they don't care about grades. They care about skills. Every other aspect of the economy is expected to use technology to be more cost effective. In other words, using fewer people to accomplish the same result. Education in general, in particular higher education, seems to be highly resistant to this. Some of the ideas were immediately criticized. So I, I would hope that the report with almost every proposal it makes, perhaps that's a way to come at it. 
would identify the impact that that proposal would have on the cost of legal education, positive or negative, and, and, and do what you can to just put that issue right at the front. If you believe that tuition should be lowered, it's really difficult to imagine the step-by-step -step way in which that actually happens. If there's any way this task force can figure out a way to put U.S. News out of business, I would urge you to do so. Recognize that uh, U.S. News and competition are not the cause of the problem, but are part of the world we live in. Why don't deans come together and stand up to U.S. News? To, to say that um, law schools are forced to behave a certain way because of U.S. News I think shirks your own moral obligation. It's out there because there was a, a public consumer need for that. Should ABA allow online education? There is a, a standard that actually limits the amount of um, education delivered electronically um, by minutes. That seems silly to me and builds in tremendous unnecessary cost. With respect to things like distance learning, it's not necessarily cheaper. Might be cheaper. Cheaper might be bad. Assuming its members can reach some sort of agreement, the task force hopes to release recommendations by early fall with a final report before Thanksgiving.